I was diagnosed with epilepsy in 1991, so it's been about 28 years. Found that I had this little tiny hole in my brain that hadn't quite formed all the way. Um, and when you have seizures, there's synapses that happen. Your brain's constantly telling what to do next. Move your hand, move your fingers to talk. If something gets interrupted, it creates a big storm in your brain. That's the best way I can describe it. So when you start uh, noticing that you're gonna have a seizure, it's called an aura. And for people, it's different. For me, it feels like an out-of-body experience. Kind of like you can see yourself from across the room sometimes in these, in these auras. Sometimes it's a smell. Sometimes it's a case of deja vu. And that's frightening to me when I uh, feel deja vu. That's a sign, that's the aura I get. And then ultimately what happens before you go out, uh, your body starts to go into this rest mode and it feels like somebody's squeezing your body as tight as they can and then you can't move anything and, and then you go out. Some people, uh, sometimes your eyes roll back in your head, sometimes your body shakes, sometimes you're still. It just depends on what kind of, what kind of uh, seizures you have, but the kind that I have is called grand mal. Um, but uh, it's constant shaking of the arms, you know, your, your legs, I, I've heard my legs have kicked up before, um, eyes roll back, lots, lots of biting of the tongue, the, like on the right side especially, so like part of my tongue has been bitten off, <laughs> essentially, um, just because of the, I guess when I have seizures I, I tend to lay on my right. And when you come to, after a seizure, the best way I can describe the feeling when you come out of a seizure, once you're back with everything and you realize you had one, the best way I could describe it is, you know the first time it feels like you, the first time it, uh, after you work out, what it feels like when you've worked out your legs and your arms, well your body, your entire body has been moving, your arms have been moving, your legs have been moving. I, you know, you could really hurt yourself. There's been times where I've fallen on the ground before a seizure and I've tried to make sure that I don't break a wrist, a, a finger, a hand. So as I get older, that's going to be a bigger concern for me. There is no fix. There is no fix for seizures. I wish there was a cure, but there isn't. And it's something that I live with every single day. Uh, it gets to the point mainly where you don't think about it. I don't ever walk into a uh, room and go, wow, I wonder if I have a seizure here. I wonder what this person will do if I have a seizure. What I have to do is I have to tell people that I work with, um, my employer, my close uh, you know, co-workers, things like that, um, what seizures are like and what can happen. I can't tell you one person, one friend that I have that has epilepsy, so it does kind of make me feel like I'm alone, but I know I'm not. Um, but it would be nice to talk to them about their experiences. I haven't reached out to any kind of support groups. I don't know if any of them exist. I'm in the grocery store. I go shopping. I'm with my family. I have two kids. I coach baseball. I travel a lot for work. I'm normal. Epilepsy is a disability, but I have learned to overcome it. I played sports. I played baseball. I played football. Um, I did not play at the college level. I played up till my senior year in all sports. When I was a kid, whatever season it was, that's the sport I was going to play, right? So I was able to just say, okay, I have epilepsy, but it doesn't define me. It's epilepsy's disability, but again, it's not going to define me.